20, it's like the, the, the first 20 minutes, second 20 minutes, and the third 20 yes. minutes, I sort of dedicate these minutes to certain activities. So the first 20 minutes are dedicated to doing a physical activity. Uh, the next 20 minutes are dedicated to reviewing uh, my schedule and, uh, for example, if I have to take a decision uh, with respect to an important issue that sort of occupies my mind. Mm -hmm. And then the next, the last 20 minutes are dedicated to self-development. Uh, reading, for example, and uh, uh, I mean, if we actually go on Facebook or lots of those uh, social media mm -hmm. websites, we will find uh, websites that are actually dedicated to self-development and self-learning. Mm -hmm. So I make sure to incorporate those uh, six 60 hour routine on daily basis. Now, I mean, if I, if I sort of reflect on really what happens, I'll tell you that initially it was very difficult for me to keep up with this routine. Mm -hmm. However, uh, later on, as I started to practice, and, uh, and let me tell you a very interesting thing from what research has to say. Research says that it takes time to incorporate a, a new daily habit in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like uh, it might take 20 days, 40 days, or the latest research says 60 days per the mm -hmm. University of London's research. So it, it definitely takes willpower. It definitely takes persistence and it takes effort. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day when we do it, uh, we, we feel amazing, amazing results. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is something that I would uh, recommend, I mean, if. Uh, Today is a Friday, people are probably, everyone is thinking like, you know, uh, am I going the right direction? Do I need to do certain things uh, that will help uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, improve the quality of our lives? So this is something that can be done. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just as you mentioned right now, are we on the right track or not? Again, this is another question that I believe that no one asks himself whether he is on the right track or not. Do you think so? Well, uh, actually, uh, determining whether we are on the right track or, no, or not uh, is actually depends on, uh, on what we do on a daily basis versus what we have planned for our lives. Like, for example, um, uh, a question. At the beginning of each and every year, uh, do we have some sort of slogan for the starting year or, or no? Uh, like for me, for example, uh, I'm sort of designated uh, to 2015 or 2015 to be a special year to be uh, uh, actually uh, the year for uh, the, the year of success. I mean, this is what I, how I named it. Uh, so we need a vision and a mission. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, one of the things actually that sort of initiate change is the level uh, of dissatisfaction that we have with certain things in our on, in our lives. As long as we are satisfied, then definitely we will not be we will we'll stay in, the, in our comfort zone. But uh, if we see that there are things, or we, if, we are not, if we are dissatisfied with things uh, that happen to us, that could be a motive. Although it's a negative motive, but, but it can help us to improve. we are all dissatisfied with what is happening, but still it's not motivating us. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, this is something very important. I believe the majority, they have the same problem, you know. And still, it is not that easy, just as you mentioned, to change the behavior. or Indeed, because it makes them uh, uh, lose hope yes. in development. And, you know, you wake up early in the morning, uh, for example, 5.30 or something like this. You are in a hurry. You, are, you have your children. They have to go to school, and you have to prepare yourself. You have to pray. You have to, to, to get ready, and you are going to your work. You, you know, it's a hectic routine that you can never get out of it. I'm, basically, I'm talking about women in general. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, the males, they have this space, but not women. Okay. All right. Uh, I totally understand. Of course, it's a challenge, and this is why we talk about willpower. Um, uh, uh, I'll tell you that uh, it is absolutely uh, normal. And uh, even, I mean, if we take it at a higher level, if we talk about the corporate level, for example, they found out, uh, research says that 75% of change efforts, they fail. And it's exactly due to the factors that you mentioned. I mean, if people feel uh, dissatisfied at a personal level, if they're not motivated enough, I mean, this is like what really organizations, the economy, and everything revolves around. So definitely, uh, it takes an effort. Uh, um, and uh, uh, it's, it's part of it lies with the personal effort that we undertake and the, the remaining part also at a corporate level. So I totally understand it's definitely a challenge. And this is really where putting in, exerting much effort makes a difference. So, uh, Ms. Nasreen, I think that the first step to succeed, um, in addition to the will, of course, is to admit that you failed in something and you have the will to succeed in it or in any other thing. Some people deny the failure. Some people, they do not like to admit that they have failed. So, how can we deal with these people? Okay. Uh, okay. Actually, it's quite interesting because uh, in psychology, uh, they tell us that there are four areas uh, in, our, in ourselves. Uh, the first area is the hidden, uh, sorry, the open area. The mm -hmm. open area is something that I know about myself. 
the other is they see it in me. Mm -hmm. uh, the hidden area is something that uh, I know about myself, but the others they do not know about, like secrets, beliefs, and you know things that we don't feel comfortable yes. to talk except with people who are at the, on the same wavelength. Uh, the third area, which actually reflects to the point that you just mentioned, it's the blind area. And uh, in the blind area, uh, it, it's specifically related to things that we are not aware of, we do not see actually in ourselves, but the others they see quite clearly. Yes. Uh, like for example, as you say, I mean, uh, the attitude, like uh, uh, when for example things uh, go wrong, do I tend to blame the others or do I accept the blame? Or for example, when I'm nervous, uh, I'm stressed, how do I react? Do I sort of uh, let it out uh, quite aggressively on the other person? or am I self-controlled? So uh, th this goes as part of the blind area. And the fourth area is the unknown area, which is something I do not know about myself, the others they do not know about me, and it happens sort of uh, momentarily, mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, on a specific, at a specific point in time. Now, coming back to the blind area, uh, this is quite interesting because uh, when we talk about personal development, uh, it's very difficult, it's actually impossible to work on something that we do not see and we're not aware of. Yes. So uh, uh, it's through the feedback of the others that we can improve, but keeping in mind that internally, we sort of have to have that internal willingness to listen to something that we are not interested to listen to. Mm. This is really what makes a difference. Now, if I have this internal sort of uh, agreement that I'm going to listen to something that I might not like, but it's going to help me to become a better person, then definitely the blind area shrinks at some point in time. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, the open area increases and bec we become better people. Like mm -hmm. the self-management. Exactly, self-management, yes. Uh, it, it, it's really part of, it's an essential part of self-management, definitely. Just to be, to be aware of myself and to be able to control myself. And I think this is the most difficult part. Yes, and to get feedback from the others. Uh, creates quite a difference and to work on, on sort of... Uh, but uh, can a person course. work on this on his own or he has to seek the help of a consultant just as I mentioned again the SWOT analysis or, or many different uh, means and methods of just uh, finding out more about the personality about the person because he can never work on his uh, personality without understanding what's going on. It's very true actually uh, 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 the SWOT analysis is one of the essential techniques uh, that help uh, in self-development and uh, to get the full benefit, for example, of doing the SWOT analysis, it would be much better to do it in uh, sort of in, in coordination with a senior, uh, if, I mean, if we talk about the corporate uh, uh, context, maybe with a manager mm -hmm. or maybe with a family member, definitely it helps uh, in, in, in personal lives. Uh, uh, on the other hand, it's quite important actually to ask and to develop listening skills and to be willing to listen to criticism mm -hmm. and to read. Uh, and I would really uh, re recommend that uh, we need to actually sort of inspire uh, 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 people and uh, to read you know, more. Each, each of your uh, statements, actually, we can make an independent episode about it, each of uh, what we, we have been it's discussing. So it's, yes, it's very important. Thank Dear you. viewers, as we wrap up our episode, we would like to thank our guest in the studio, Ms. Nasreen Nasreddin, Independent Management Training Consultant. Thank you very much for joining us. Ms. Thank you very much. It was thank a pleasure you. being with you and uh, have a very beautiful day. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you thank you. On with this, we come to the end of our breakfast show for today. Thank you all for joining us. Stay tuned for more coming up on RTV International.